Okay, so now the last topic uh, for this chapter is uh, unsteady flow processes. Um, it's not exactly new. I mean, uh, we haven't really done these problems before, but there, there aren't really new notes. Um, we're just going to take everything that we have learned. We take that huge, that big conservation of energy equation that we had in the past, and now it, it just doesn't simplify. It, it just, the right side is not zero. The inlets and outlets are not zero. We, we kind of need everything in that conservation regime. We're really taking everything that we've learned so far and putting it into these problems. So a little short uh, introduction. Unsteady flow uh, means the mass is not change the mass is changing sorry the unsteady flow means the mass in the system is changing maybe we are collecting mass uh, in our system or we are discharging mass uh, so with this one there are changes with time there are initial and there are final you know mass and energy there, there's the initial uh, situation and there's the final situation in addition to the inlets and the outlets and don't get them confused We'll talk about that. So if we look at charging or recharging of rigid vessels, pressure cookers using pressurized air to drive fluid, these are unsteady flow processes. When you see things where it starts uh, with, with one amount of fluid and it ends, you know, an hour later, I don't know, 30 minutes later, it ends with a different amount of fluid. These are unsteady flow processes processes. So we can't use those equations. We can't use those steady flow equations. We can't use uh, any of the shortcuts we have been taking earlier. So, uh, but we still have two equations. We still have two equations, the mass, conservation of mass, and conservation of energy. Now, be careful here. All of this on the left-hand side is inlets and outlets. So this is the mass and the energy at uh, going in of the inlet. Mass and energy going out of the outlet. Do not get them confused with these M2 and M1 or E2 and E1. Um, and, and I have a bad habit, and the book does this too. Sometimes back in the last section for steady flow devices, they say, you know, E2 and E1 are like inlets and outlets. Uh, but they kind of do a shortcut with there, there because there, there's no change on the right-hand side of the equation. So they move the inlets and outlets to the other side of the equation and make them, you know, ones and twos. But here, anyway, here, these are not inlets and outlets. These are final and initial. Final and initial. Okay? So, so let's, let's just go to our, remember, so this is review because this is about the third or fourth time we've had this equation in our notes. This is our big conservation of energy equation, right? This is our big conservation of energy equation, right? The heat going in and out, the work going in and out, the fluid, the energy in the fluid going in and out on the left-hand side equals the change in energy, right? The change in kinetic energy, change in potential energy, change in U, right, total energy, um, and flow work, and this is all changes over time, whereas the left-hand side of the equation is crossing boundaries. So here's our big equation. We, we've had this before. We've had this before, but we've always simplified it, so we're just not going to simplify it. So any, any heat transfer plus any work plus any, what, what is this E? This is the energy in the fluid. So energy in the fluid going in, energy in the fluid going out. So I'm going to kind of sum up all the mass in theta ends minus all the mass out theta out. So think about how much mass came in times how much energy was in that mass that was coming in. Uh, so this energy in the mass that was coming in, that would be H in plus kinetic energy in plus potential energy in, right? This theta, just think about, okay, how much, how much mass was going out and how much energy was in that mass that was going out. So the energy in that mass that was going out is the H of the fluid going out, the kinetic energy of the fluid going out the potential energy of the fluid going out. All right, so all that, that's still just the left-hand side of the equation, equals the change in energy. So let's say 
the mass final energy final minus the mass initial energy initial. All right, the mass so just calculate how much mass is in there at the end of the time, right? At the end of the problem. How much mass was in there at the beginning of the problem? Now, it may not give you the mass, you know, just explicitly tell you the mass. You might have to work that for that. Might have to find the, you know, if, if you know the volume and the specific volume, then, then they tell you the mass. So some of these are not going to be just given on a silver platter. You have to work for these. Um, all right, but this energy in the fluid initially an energy in the fluid finally this is it could be h and ke and pe or u plus ke plus pe when should we use h when should we use u well use h if it is a constant pressure process that the volume is changing right use h if it's a constant pressure volume change process because then that h we don't have to calculate boundary layer um, we use u if it is not a constant pressure uh, process we use u if it's a rigid tank and if it's a rigid tank we don't have to calculate boundary work but do be careful i think there are some problems where if it's not a constant pressure or not a constant volume process if it's if it's some other weird process what would we do we would use u and we would still calculate some boundary work here on the left-hand side of our equation. So, so here, this is the, you know, this is all the final H, the final kinetic energy, final potential energy, and this is the the initial H, kinetic energy plus potential energy. Now, this might be U, H or U. Okay, uh, many times the kinetic energy and potential energy is negligible. We did a problem. I don't know if you saw. Uh, notice we did a problem where uh, we saw that even a, a change in height of 100 meters only changed the energy by one kilojoule per kilogram. Uh, and also the, a change in velocity of, or a velocity of 45 meters per second only changed um, the energy one kilojoule per kilogram. And so if we're looking at thousands, you know, 2,000, 3,000 kilojoules per kilogram, then most of the time, that kinetic energy and potential energy is negligible. M most of the time, they don't tell us the kinetic energy or potential energy, so so we can assume it's negligible. So, uh, if it, it is negligible, so either they don't tell you, um, if if you know if they tell you, then calculate it. That's generally my rule of thumb. If they tell you the velocity, uh, then you probably need to calculate it. But almost all these problems, we don't calculate kinetic energy and potential energy. So this does simplify a little bit to this. So this is the equation that I would have on my formula sheet, Q plus W. All right. Calculate how much mass went in times the H that it was going in. Subtract out all the mass that went out times the enthalpy H of it going out. And that equals... All the mass final, and I'm going to put U final, mass initial, U initial, or this might be H, or H. All right, H if it's a constant pressure process. So that's the equation that I would have on my formula sheet. That's the equation that we're going to use for unsteady flow processes, processes where it, we're we're putting mass into our tank and the mass is changing right it's not a steady flow process or maybe we had mass in a tank and a lot of it is going out so we don't have as mass don't have as much mass in our tank if the mass changes from beginning to end of our process uh then it's unsteady flow so this would be the 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 road map, this would be the equation that we would use for unsafe flow processes. Okay? Alright, you ready to look at some examples?